Afonso I, also called Afonso Henriques, nicknamed the conqueror by the Portuguese. And El Bortucali and Ibn Arenque or Ibn Arenque by the Moors whom he fought. Was the first king of Portugal. He achieved the independence of the county of Portugal, establishing a new kingdom and doubling its area with the Reconquista, an objective that he pursued until his death. Afonso was the son of Teresa of Leon and Henry of Burgundy, rulers of the county of Portugal. Henry died in 1112, leaving Teresa to rule alone. Unhappy with Teresa's romantic relationship with Galician Fernando Pérez de Traba and his political influence, the Portuguese nobility rallied around Afonso, who revolted and defeated his mother at the Battle of Salmameja in 1128 and became Count of Portugal soon afterwards. In 1139, Afonso renounced the suzerainty of the Kingdom of Leon and established the independent Kingdom of Portugal. Afonso actively campaigned against the Moors in the south. In 1139 he won a decisive victory at the Battle of Aurique, and in 1147 he conquered Sondheim and Lisbon from the Moors. He secured the independence of Portugal following a victory over Leon at Valdevez and received papal approval through Manifestus Probatum. Afonso died in 1185 and was succeeded by his son, Sancho I. Afonso was the son of Teresa, the illegitimate daughter of King Alfonso VI of Leon and Castile, and her husband, Henry of Burgundy. According to Fernal Lopes Cronica de Portugal de 1419, the future Portuguese king was born in Guimarães, which was at the time the most important political center of his parents. This was accepted by most Portuguese scholarship until in 1990 Torquato de Souza Soares proposed Coimbra, the center of the county of Coimbra and another political center of Afonso's progenitors. As his birthplace, which caused outrage in Guimarães and a polemic between this historian and José Hermano Sariva. Almeida Fernández later proposed Viseu as the birthplace of Afonso basing himself on the chronic Agathorm, which states Afonso was born in 1109, a position followed by José Matosu in his biography of the king. Abel Estefano has suggested a different date and thesis, proposing 1106 as the birth date and the region of Tierra de Campos or even Sahagún as likely birthplaces based on the known itineraries of Counts Henry and Teresa. Henry and Teresa reigned jointly as Count and Countess of Portugal until his death on May 22, 1112 during the Siege of Astorga, after which Teresa ruled Portugal alone. She would proclaim herself queen but was captured and forced to reaffirm her vassalage to her half-sister, Baraka of Leon. It is not known who was the tutor of Afonso. Later traditions, probably started with João Soares Coelho in the mid-13th century and ampliated by later chronicles such as the Crónica de Portugal de 1419, asserted he had been Egis Moniz de Ribadouro, possibly with the help of oral memories that associated the tutor to the house of Ribadouro. Yet, contemporary documents, namely from the chancery of Afonso in his early years as Count of Portugal, Indicate according to the historian José Matosu that the most likely tutor of Afonso Henriques was Egis Moniz's oldest brother. Hermogio Moniz, who, besides being the senior brother within the family of Ribadoro, became the dapifer and majordomus of Afonso I from 1128 until his death in 1135, which indicates his closer proximity to the prince. In an effort to pursue a larger share in the Leonese inheritance, his mother Teresa joined forces with Fernando Pérez de Traba, the most powerful count in Galicia. The Portuguese nobility disliked the alliance between Galicia and Portugal and rallied around Afonso. The Archbishop of Braga was also concerned with the dominance of Galicia, apprehensive of the ecclesiastical pretensions of his new rival the Galician Archbishop of Santiago de Compostela. Diego Gel Myers, who had claimed an alleged discovery of relics of St. James in his town, as a way to gain power and riches over the other cathedrals in the Iberian Peninsula. In order to stop her son Afonso from overthrowing her, Teresa exiled him when he was 12 in the year 1120. In 1122, Afonso turned 14, the adult age in the 12th century. In symmetry with his cousin, Afonso made himself a knight on his own account in the Cathedral of Zamora in 1125. After the military campaign of Alfonso VII against his mother in 1127, Afonso revolted against her and proceeded to take control of the county from its queen. Statue of Afonso Henriques, Lisbon, Portugal. In 1128, near Guimarães at the Battle of Salmameja, Afonso and his supporters overcame troops under both his mother and her lover, Count Fernando Pérez de Trava of Galicia. Afonso exiled his mother to Galicia, and took over rule of the county of Portugal. 
Thus the possibility of reincorporating Portugal into a kingdom of Portugal and Galicia as before was eliminated and Afonso became sole ruler following demands for greater independence from the county's church and nobles. The battle was mostly ignored by the Leonese suzerain who was occupied at the time with a revolt in Castile. He was also, most likely, waiting for the reaction of the Galician families. After Teresa's death in 1131, Afonso VII of Leon and Castile proceeded to demand vassalage from his cousin. On April 6, 1129, Afonso Henriques dictated the writ in which he proclaimed himself Prince of Portugal or Prince of the Portuguese, an act informally allowed by Afonso VII. As it was thought to be Afonso Henriques's right by blood, as one of two grandsons of the Emperor of Hispania. Afonso then turned his arms against the persistent problem of the Moors in the south. His campaigns were successful and, on July 25, 1139, he obtained an overwhelming victory in the Battle of Aurique, and straight after was proclaimed king of the Portuguese by his soldiers. Establishing his equality and rank to the other realms of the peninsula, although the first reference to his royal title dates from 1140. The first assembly of the Portuguese Cortes convened at Lamigo is a 17th century embellishment of Portuguese history. Complete independence from Alfonso VII of Leon's suzerainty, however, could not be achieved by military means alone. The county of Portugal still had to be acknowledged diplomatically by the neighboring lands as a kingdom and, most importantly, by the Catholic Church and the Pope. Afonso wed Mafalda of Savoy, daughter of Count Amadeus III of Savoy, and sent ambassadors to Rome to negotiate with the Pope. He succeeded in renouncing the suzerainty of his cousin, Alfonso VII of Leon, becoming instead a vassal of the papacy, as the kings of Sicily and Aragon had done before him. King Afonso I at the siege of Lisbon in Portugal he built several monasteries and convents and bestowed important privileges to religious orders. He is notably the builder of Alcabasa Monastery, to which he called the Cistercian Order of his uncle Bernard of Clairvaux of Burgundy. In 1143, he wrote to Pope Innocent II to declare himself and the kingdom servants of the Church, swearing to pursue driving the Moors out of the Iberian Peninsula. Bypassing any king of Leon, Afonso declared himself the direct liege man of the papacy. Afonso continued to distinguish himself by his exploits against the Moors, from whom he wrested Santarim and Lisbon in 1147. He also conquered an important part of the land south of the Tagus River, although this was lost again to the Moors in the following years. Meanwhile, King Alfonso VII of Leon regarded the independent ruler of Portugal as nothing but a rebel. Conflict between the two was constant and bitter in the following years. Afonso became involved in a war, taking the side of the Aragonese king, an enemy of Castile. To ensure the alliance, his son Sancho was engaged to Dulce of Aragon. Finally, after winning the Battle of Valdevez, the Treaty of Zamora established peace between the cousins and the recognition by the Kingdom of Leon that Portugal was a fully independent kingdom. In 1169 the now old King Afonso was possibly disabled in an engagement near Badajoz, by a fall from his horse and slamming against the castle gate, and made prisoner by the soldiers of King Ferdinand II of Leon, his son-in-law. He spent months at the hot springs of São Pedro do Sul, but never recovered and from this time onward the Portuguese king never rode a horse again. However, it is not certain if this was because of the disability, according to the later Portuguese chronistic tradition, this happened. Because Afonso would have to surrender himself again to Ferdinand or risk war between the two kingdoms if he ever rode a horse again. Portugal was obliged to surrender as his ransom almost all the conquests Afonso had made in Galicia in the previous years. This event became known in Portuguese history as the disaster of Badajoz. Afonso at the Battle of Aurique witnessing the miracle of the cross in 1179 the privileges and favors given to the Catholic Church were compensated. With consistent effort by several parties, such as the primate Archbishop of Braga, Paiu Mendes, in the papal court, the papal bull manifestus probatum was promulgated accepting the new king as vassal to the Pope exclusively. In it Pope Alexander III also acknowledged Afonso as king and Portugal as an independent kingdom with the right to conquer lands from the Moors. In 1184, the Amahad Caliph Abu Yagub Yusuf rallied a great Amahad force to retaliate against the Portuguese raids done since the end of a five-year truce in 1178 and besieged Sanaran, which was defended by Afonso's son Sancho. The Amahad siege failed when news arrived the Archbishop of Compostela had come to the defense of the city and Fernando II of Leon himself with his army. The Amahads ended the siege and their retreat turned into a rout due to panic in their camp, 
with the Ahmad Caliph being injured in the process and dying on the way back to Seville. Afonso died shortly after on December 6, 1185. The Portuguese revere him as a hero, both on account of his personal character and as the founder of their nation. There are mythical stories that it took ten men to carry his sword, and that Afonso wanted to engage other monarchs in personal combat, but no one would dare accept his challenge. It is also told, despite his honorable character, that he had a temper. Several chronicles give the example of a papal legate that brought a message from the Pope Pascal II refusing to acknowledge Afonso's claim as king, either after committing or saying a small offense against him or after being simply read the letter. Afonso almost killed, in his rage, the papal representative, taking several Portugalans nobles and soldiers to physically restrain the young would-be king. Tomb of Afonso on Reeks in the Santa Cruz Monastery in Coimbra. In July 2006, the tomb of the king was to be opened for scientific purposes by researchers from the University of Coimbra and the University of Granada. The opening of the tomb provoked considerable concern among some sectors of Portuguese society and Portuguese state agency for architectural patrimony halted the opening. Requesting more protocols from the scientific team because of the importance of the king in the nation's heart and public thought. In 1146, Afonso married Mafalda, daughter of Amadeus III, Count of Savoy and Mahot of Alban, both appearing together for the first time in May of that year confirming royal charters. They had the following issue, before his marriage to Mafalda, King Afonso fathered his first son with Camoa Gomez, daughter of Count Gomez Nunez and Elvira Perez. Sister of Fernando and Bermudo Perez de Traba, the extramarital offspring by Elvira Galter were, King Afonso was also the father of. Thanks for watching.